I'm Allison from MuchMusic.com, and we are here with Wolfgang Gartner. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. We've been playing your video. I know you saw it today. I did see it today. It was a big surprise. Well, it was a big surprise how amazing the video is. It's just incredible. Yeah, it was, uh, that was actually a surprise to me, too. Yeah. yeah. How did it come about? Uh, it was just magic. It just dropped into our lap. I mean, I made yeah. the song, and then uh, a couple of uh, couple months later, uh, this guy, Ryan McNamara, I think is his name, mm -hmm. from L.A., who's a, a video producer, just liked the song so much and felt so strongly about it that he made this video for it and sent it to us and we were all blown away and had him fix it up a little bit and it yeah. became the official video for El America. Because you're American, do you find your view of the States has changed a lot now that you travel the world so much? Um, I love the States more every time I leave the States. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not because I don't like other countries, it's just the U.S. is home for me. You right. Know? That's, that's where I belong, that's where I'll always be, um, despite the problems, despite some of, you know, despite the fat people at Walmart, <laughs> whatever. You know, I still love it, it's still my home. Do you often have visuals? Like, do you have a story going on in your head when you make a song? Um, not often. Most of the time what's happening is I'm kind of visualizing how it's going to work at a gig. So, uh, basically I'll have a picture in my head of the last good gig that I played, not just the last gig that I played, but the last really good show that I played. And as I'm trying to write music and trying to write melodies and writing the drums and everything, I'm thinking, okay, how would this have gone over at this show? And I'm right. visualizing it and trying to think of it in that context. So that's usually what's going through my head. What makes a show good for you? Um, Crowd response, that's yeah. it. Crowd response, I mean, obviously the, the tech stuff all has to be on point and it has to be a good sound system, but that also influences the crowd response too. I mean, just a good crowd that's really into it, that, right. that understands it and came there to hear me do what I do. And of course, we've been playing your video a lot. We love it at much. And we've also been playing a lot of Benny Benassi's Beautiful People. Beautiful. You guys are two DJs that yeah. we've been playing on a mainstream station a lot, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you don't always see that. Yeah. Do you think DJing and electro music is getting more mainstream? Oh, Can you notice? Because you're always in it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, in in a huge way over the past couple of years, especially with people like you know David Guetta. Yeah. Uh, he's he was kind of like the 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 catalyst that that helped open the door for a lot of other people like myself to sort of enter that mainstream realm of dance music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Past couple years, it's been building and building, and I feel like it's, it's at the biggest peak that it's ever been at now. Dance music itself yeah. and dance music's influence in mainstream music, because you hear, listen to the new Black Eyed Peas album. Yeah. It's basically a dance album. Britney's listen, new album. Britney's is new all album, dance. And it's going to keep going this way. It's going to keep peaking. Who knows? Uh, I mean, everything goes in cycles. Right. And this happened with disco in the 1970s, and all these jazz artists were making disco albums it's the same thing and then it died so i'm not saying this is gonna die but everything goes in cycles right. i don't take it for granted it could it could all disappear tomorrow but i think we have another few years of really good really good times ahead one of your uh, probably best known remixes is three is britney's three yeah yeah have you listened to her new album? Do you think you're going to remix anything from it? I have not listened to her album, and I think there's one single that I heard like uh, 30 seconds of on yeah. a music video while walking through a room in a house somewhere. So I'm kind of out of the loop right now just because yeah. I've been on tour so long that I haven't really been able to like listen to anything. But I heard that there's like dubstep on her album. Yeah, there is. And yeah. 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 
Well, because you worked with Will I Am, and he worked with right. her on that album. Oh, uh, okay. So okay. that's probably where that comes yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. And your song with Will I Am dropped today. Right. It's great. Thank How you. did you get hooked up with him? Switch up. Lock, sunk in your bed, rock, hot, up in your love shot. Knock out while you hold shot. I'm stuck in your head. Lock. Switch up. Yeah, get out, I won't worry, quit making me feel. Give it to me, I want it all. I actually made that song just as an instrumental um, about. I made that in, I think, October of 2009, uh -huh. and then I sent it to my manager, and we both kind of talked about it, and it was a little bit boring as it was, and had a lot of space in it, mm -hmm. and we thought it could use a vocalist, and Will had been a fan of my music for a while, obviously he's a DJ, DJs in his spare time just for fun, obviously, yeah. um, and he'd been using my tracks to write lyrics over for Black Eyed Peas, he'd just been using them kind of as inspiration, so he was a fan of me, mm -hmm. we sent the track to him, Literally the next day, we got the track back with the full forever vocal yeah. over it. I threw it on top of it, and there it was. And Do you think we'll see a video for it? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. We're in the process of shooting the video Do you think you'll right be now. in the video? I will be in the video, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. very cool, because he, he called you in one interview, he called you an anomaly. He's a DJ, a musician, a fan of music, a hater, a lover. I saw that's, that. That's big. That's big, yeah. That's a lot and, to live up well, to. Well, I read the hater part, I was like, what, he's calling me a hater? But then if you read the whole thing, Yeah, he like, said it's a good thing. It's yeah. very poetic, and yeah. that's, that's totally Will. Like, the way he talks is just, it's, yeah, his brain works in yeah. a different level than most people. You think you'd be working with him again? I would, yeah, yeah. I would. Very cool. And in the song, he, he talks about DJ AM, and you mentioned yep. David Guetta earlier. Yeah. You've worked with Dead Mouse. Yeah. Is the DJ community a tight-knit one? Um, it is. It actually is. I would think is, it'd be yeah. competitive, but you seem to work with a lot of your it counterparts. Is, it is competitive. Um, it's it's tight knit in that everybody sort of keeps in contact with each other and talks to each other, but right. it is a business and the competitiveness of it is something that has always bothered me because I yeah. feel like music and art should not be a competition. Yep. But it's a business and in any business there is an element of competition. So yeah. I mean, when you've got things like the DJ list, the top 100 DJs, and everybody's trying yeah. to like rank on this list, then it becomes a competition. And to me, I don't, I don't like that aspect yeah. of it. So it is tightly knit, and a lot of people, you know, talk to each other and keep in touch with each other. But there's totally that element of competition to yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I, I think I just use the term DJ to describe them all. And you're okay. Are you okay with the term DJ? Yeah, using I'm, a it? I'm a DJ and I'm a music producer. Because there are some of your counterparts are against the term. Yes. Well, some of them, yeah, some of them are against the term. Even though, and a lot of those people that are against the term, they are actually DJs. Like, how do you define anything. it? Because I've used it before, and people are you shouldn't use it in that context. And I thought a it's DJ seems is so somebody that mixes music. Together. Yeah, yeah, it is. It doesn't matter if you're doing it on a computer or. If Wolfgang says that, then that's how I'm going to use a it. DJ for now. is somebody who mixes music. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's all your own music or yeah. if you're doing it on a computer or if you've got a few effects boxes. If you're mixing songs together and not really performing them live, or you're not, you don't have a keyboard there, or mm -hmm. a guitar there, you're a DJ. Right. What, if you want to try and call yourself a live performance and charge 20 bucks more for tickets, then <laughs> go for it. That's actually a great gimmick, but yeah. you're a DJ. You were saying live sets. You were talking a little bit on Twitter in the past few days about using CDs in live sets. Yeah, yeah. What is, what is that? What do you mean exactly by that? You just DJ shouldn't be using CDs. It should all be. No, no. I was I was actually talking about exactly what you just said. Like, where is the line drawn between a DJ set and a mm -hmm. live set? Because a lot of artists at these festivals, a lot of DJs are getting billed as live next to right. their name. But you go look at what they're doing, and they've got a computer and they're mixing music right. together. So where is the line drawn? If you have a computer and you play all your own music, yeah. is it then live? But you're physically there, so it's not live? Yeah, yeah it doesn't I, really I don't sense. understand. That's all I was saying was like, where is the line? Right. And nobody really knows where it is right now. Yeah. It's just sort of become a gimmick and I think promoters and agents are trying to use it to, to raise ticket prices.